Look at somebody and say your breakthrough is in your sight. Your breakthrough. I wish I had somebody give God some praise. Let me tell you what Dr. John Larry told me in 95. He said the choir don't got to be just right. The music don't got to be just right. You don't got to feel just right. That's an insult to the Holy Ghost. All you got to do is let the Holy Ghost begin to move and manifest his purpose. Look at somebody say, I want to praise the way for the greatest miracle in my life. I want to praise the way for the greatest happening in my life. Who am I prophesying to them? Your breakthrough is in your sight. Throw your hands up to heaven and give God some praise. The last three weeks I've gone from Ohio. It's called the miracles of God. A man who got in a lot of truck accident and had his arm soaked back on. The doctor said, you'll never have any feelings there. Your fingers have never moved. I didn't lay hands on him. I just preached the healing message of God. That God still is a miracle working God. I turn around, he's fought out by the power of God. Begin to move his hands and his finger. 22 years. The last three weeks, I'm going from Ohio to Boston to New York to Kansas. Now I'm back here in the beautiful state of Dallas, Texas. And the great ministry of Eagles Nets can lead you all. But the general overseer, Dr. W.B. Grant, somebody said, God has a miracle with your name on it. Look at somebody said, you don't praise him. I'm going to praise him. If you don't magnify his name, I'm going to magnify his name. Look at somebody say you better be obedient to God. Now before I break bread with you, I want you to turn around and look at somebody and say, You're beautiful in God. You're beautiful in the Lord. But that's something more God wants to do in your life. And we're going to have revival all this week. I want you to invite somebody out to the greatest happening in their lives and let them know that. God has a meaning for them. Somebody say tonight. I want you to bring a scarf or a washcloth. We're going to wave it. It's going to be the mantle of victory. I'm going to prophesy to you as I will this morning. But tonight, somebody say tonight. What are you going to bring? Some kind of scarf, some kind of washcloth. And we're going to wave it. Before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and we're going to stand in the gap for our loved ones, and we're going to stand in the gap for our families, and we're not going to let the devil take our inheritance. Let somebody say, God has an assignment for you this week. Somebody say, Hallelujah. I believe in the God of miracles, don't you? Now listen, I'm going through airports, I'm going through hot weather, cold weather. I said, my God, man, I need to get back to warm weather. <laughs> Somebody said, hallelujah. I got here, I said, we're back to warm weather again. Yes. You don't see where it's cold. And I said, hurry up, let's get out of here. Somebody said, hallelujah. <laughs> Someplace you just need to hurry up and leave. <laughs> Look at somebody say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Highly favored. Highly favored. It's an honor to grace this. Always grace this roster. Always a delight to be with you. Matter of fact, I bragged on you when I was in Kansas because they took me to a steakhouse. I said, no, there's no, there's, there's no steakhouse better than Texas and Dallas. And I will forget it because everything's bigger in Texas. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say there's certain blessings that follows obedience. Father, we thank you for the anointing that's going to be released this morning that's going to solidify everything in our lives. Touch the lips of clay and let me be used by your glory to minister to the needs of your beloved children. We thank you for the general overseer of this ministry. We stay in our hands of prayer and his direction. We thank you for all those that we have audience with today. Don't let one need unmet. Move through your spirit, move through your power, 
And we'll give you glory, praise, and honor. Somebody say hallelujah. Give God a great big clap off and a praise. And you may be seated in the presence of God. Somebody say the presence of the Lord. Wherever the presence of God is, there is what? Liberty. Liberty. Go in the book of John, and I want to talk about your assignment. Say it with me, my breakthrough is in my assignment. What has the Father asked you to do by His Spirit that you have yet to obey the force of God? Somebody said the voice of the Lord. Now let's go in the Word of God, all right? Somebody said we're going to have miracles this week. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of the Amatite, saying, Arise, somebody said going up, and we're coming out. Arise and go to Nineveh, say Nineveh, your assignment. Say my assignment is where my breakthrough is. It's imperative that we understand our assignment. God began to speak to me when I was writing letters to a partner on the plane. Come over here to Texas. He said, tell them that their breakthrough is based upon their obedience and their assignment. Somebody say, my breakthrough is in my assignment. There's something God has asked each and every one of us to do. That we had fallen short to do. But by the grace of God, may He help us to fulfill that great commission. Now, how many of us at one given time or another have been disobedient? I'll read my hands. I know that you have never been disobedient to God, so let me help you. I know you have never been reluctant to the thoughts and the plans of God, so let me talk about trace. There have been moments that God, I didn't want to go. There have been moments I didn't want to do what God asked me to do. But then I found myself wrestling with God. And every time you wrestle with God, it's a losing battle. You're already defeated because you will never be able to understand the magnitude of God is until you walk in obedience unto Him. Look at somebody say it's time to arise and get in our sight. Arise and go to Nineveh, that great city, cry against it for their wickedness, is come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarsha from the presence of the Lord. And he went down to Shop and he found a ship going to Tarsha. So he paid the fare thereof. And he went down into into it to go with them unto Tarsha. Somebody say Tarsha. From the presence of the Lord. His assignment is where? It's in Nineveh. Your breakthrough is in a place that God assigned you to go and to do. I am convinced in all of the traveling that God has enabled me to have His grace and His anointing that I've seen the body of Christ so bewildered. So bombarded with the cares of life that they have failed to realize that no breakthrough comes until you move in obedience unto God. God is waiting to bring us into a closer relationship with Him, but our obedience is the avenue for our breakthrough. Somebody say, My breakthrough, my breakthrough is in my assignment. What has God? Ordain you to do that you're afraid to be obedient to. What is that one thing that you're not willing to let go of to move in the realms of the Spirit of God? Ladies and gentlemen, this morning, may I give you this teaching that in the lives of children we see how reluctancy can cause you to be on the wrong ship, going in the wrong direction. But the moment that God gets your undivided attention, He has a way to get you back on track. Look at somebody say, it's time to arise. It's time to arise 
and get back on track. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarsha to hear from in verse 3 and 4 again. From the presence of the Lord. And he went down to Joppa and he found a ship going to Tarsha. So he paid with his own money the fare thereof. And he went down into it to go with him unto Tarsha from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord, somebody say, but the Lord. See, God has a way to get out of undivided attention. But the Lord sent out a great wind unto the sea. And there was a mighty tempest in the sea that the ship was likened to be broken. Then the mariners or the readers were afraid, cried every man unto his God, every dim eyed God that was present upon that ship. They sacrifice up to, they gave homage up to, they worship and reverence all the dim eyed gods, but there was a wailing of a cry that could not rescue them. You see, disobedience cuts you off of the mainstream of God's blessing. Say that with me. Disobedience cuts me off of the mainstream of the blessings of God. How many wants to be blessed by God? How many wants to walk in divine healing by God? How many wants to encounter God in ways you have yet thus far to encounter Him? There is something on the horizon that's bigger than you and I, ladies and gentlemen. And God has me back in Dallas, Texas to tell you in the month of October that He set you up for your assignment. Because your breakthrough is in your assignment. Say it with me. My breakthrough is in my assignment. Somebody say, my assignment is valuable. It's imperative that we obey the said Lord. Now, as he found himself on another ship, but there was a ship that was sailing to Nineveh, but the seer, the prophet, was not on the right ship. That's speaking to the church today in the 21st century. The church had jumped ship and they wonder why there's so much pain and chaos. They wonder why there's so much heartache and God spoke to me on the flight. He said, tell them, son of man, that their breakthrough is in their assignment. What are you afraid of? What has bewitched you that you're not doing what God has you to do? Somebody say it's better to be obedient to God than it is to hearken to the voice of man. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah now. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost speaking to somebody. I'm going to sign to somebody. It's time to get in your sight. And the Lord sent out a great wind beating against the ship, speaking to the seas and prophesying to the angry winds and the waves. And the tempest began to arise to the place that the ships about to sink and capsize. And here are the marinas. They cried out to their dim eyed gods. And they cast forth wars. And they were in the ship into the sea to lighten it of them. But Jonah was going down into the sides of the ship. And he laid and was. That's the problem with the church today. We're supposed to be seeing and we're asleep. We're supposed to be praying and we're asleep. We're supposed to be dancing and praising and worshiping God. But we are asleep with a summer sleep, a soulful spirit, heaviness of the eyes, and the devil is coming in with all forces of hell and we're wondering why we don't have victory. You have victory by your obedience unto God. on your life, you got to get in your assignment by God. I don't care what age you are. Do you hear what I'm saying? I don't care what age you are. There's no excuse why you can't obey God. You may not be a prophet. You may not be a general. You not, might not be an apostle. But you have an assignment by God to do today. 
You found yourself the eagle's death because the Holy Ghost threw you here so you can hear a message. Your assignment is where your breakthrough is. And when you get your breakthrough, God will cause heaven to give you a standing ovation. When you get your breakthrough, get off the ship that's leading you into damnation and destruction and get on that ship to your purpose and your destiny. Look at somebody say you better get on the right ship. He's talking to you. Who am I talking to this morning? Your breakthrough is in the place of your hand. Come on, sit with me. You see, Nineveh's in the northeast. Tarsus in the west. Two oxen down rich. God told the seer, go to Nineveh. And the seer lost sight of a purpose. When a seer no longer sees, you don't have hope. When a seer no longer has direction for you. Because of some things that God speaks through a leader, then he won't speak through you. That's why God has seers in the house of the Lord. Help you get direction in your life. Help you get a breakthrough. Help you get closer to God. But when a seer no longer sees, you are in trouble. You are without hope. But thank God for the prophets are yet seeing and they know the mind and the will and the purpose of God. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. They can see it through your eyes and the witness of your soul. Bring that pain out of you and birth greatness out of you. My God, where are the seers at? You got one of the most tremendous gifts in this house that I've ever seen. And I've been all over the world. And I've never seen any seer as the one you have in this house on every day basis. And I saw that with full confidence. We need to value what we have. Someone, you're on the wrong ship. You took your own money, run it from the presence of God, when God said, that's not your sight. And any time you're not your sight, he'll call nature to preach against you. He'll call storm to rise up against you. He'll call something to get your undivided attention until you get back on course. Some of us don't have a choice. You're going to obey God whether you want to or not. Whether you feel like it or not. He didn't ask you how you felt. He asked you to move by faith and obey the Spirit of God. Who am I prophesying to this? Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. It was the Lord that sent a great wind into the seas and told the seas, look, there's somebody that's going to Tarsha that had no business going to Tarsha. And I want you to interrupt that plan and that purpose and bring them back to me. The ship was lucky to be broken. The raiders, they cried out to them, being my gods, and none of their gods to rescue them. But here's a seer. Here's a man of God that's asleep when everybody else is panicking. Their gods couldn't rescue them and deliver them. And they cast in lots, and it fell upon the sleeper. He's supposed to be a seer, not a sleeper. And we have fallen asleep and we wonder why the devil is bringing havoc in our homes. Robbing our financial inheritance. Robbing us of our health. Bring it to a place of torment and despair. It's because we have fallen asleep when God said, get up on your feet and wave those hands up to me and render and do the benevolence unto me. Worship me and praise me. Seek my face with all your heart. While the church is asleep, the devil's dead bitch. The church is asleep. Asleep while the devil's busy. Destroying our families. Destroying our occupation. In our bodies and our minds cause us to be a place that we're so apart with the cares of life. We don't know what direction to take. Your assignment is where your breakthrough is. You that's watching me right now, your assignment. If you want prophecy to come to pass, get in your sight. You want to walk in divine healing, get in your assignment. Somebody shout, my assignment is where my breakthrough is. 
So the ship master came to him and said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise and call upon thy God. If so be that thy God will think upon us that we perish not. And they said, Man, one to the fellow, come and let us cast lots that we may know for what cause this evil has come upon us. They cast the lots and it fell upon the seer who was a sleeper. May God open our eyes this morning and enlighten us with revelation that we see the course that God set before us and walking out line by line and precept by precept. Somebody said it's better to be obedient to God than hearken to the voice of man. And then it said in verse 8, Then said they unto him, Tell us, uh, we pray thee, for who causes this evil to come upon us? What is that occupation? And he looks to me and said, We want to know where you're from. Where are you born? What country are you born from? Because we have been out in these seas and we have never encountered such an eruption, a disturbance of angry winds and angry waves. And they cast locks and have in the feet of the sleeper who was supposed to be in a seer. Why have we fallen asleep when we're supposed to be in the oldest prayer? Why have we fallen asleep when it's time to render our gifts and our times unto God and say, Lord, use me however you want to use me. We need to rise up and raise a stand. Yeah. We have fallen asleep. Yeah. We have come perplexed with all the complex problems around us. And we wonder why God's not answering our prayers. And he said, I can't answer you until you get your assignment. Yes. Somebody say, my assignment. my assignment. They asked him, what is your occupation? He said, I'm a seer. They said, I'm a sleeper. Yeah. How in the world can you be so calm and the ship is about to capsize? And Jonah said, you're going to have to throw me overboard. Because as long as my disobedience stands in this ship, you're not going to live. Yeah. And as long as your disobedience doesn't just affect you, it affects everybody in your household. Yeah. It affects everybody in your city, yeah. your community, your state, yeah. and your nation. Yeah. One man's obedience can shift a whole entire region. One woman's obedience can move heaven and have undivided attention. Yeah. You got it. Around your knee that presents your come on. Somebody said, Get in your sight. Let's go down to chapter 2 and then I'm going to highlight four things for you. Four, several things. I'm sure. Chapter 2. Jonah gives us the key and I'm going to highlight four different things this morning. Verse 7 of chapter 2. When my soul faded within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came into thee, and to thy holy temple, that they observe lying vanities, forsake their own mercy. But I will sacrifice, somebody say, I will sacrifice, somebody say, sacrificial praise. He taught us sacrificial praise. In an unpredictable place. With the voice of thanksgiving. Somebody say the voice of thanksgiving. Number three. I will pay them that I have vowed for deliverance. The word salvation is deliverance. Is of the Lord. And the Lord speak unto the fish. He does speak to the sea. Now he's speaking to the fish. The Lord, how is it that a fish can hear God but a seer yes. is a son? Yes. How in the world can God speak to a sperm whale? <laughs> a sperm whale is the only whale that's big enough for a man to walk through down the tongue into the belly. That's the biggest whale in the ocean. And Three theologians, and one of my children about said, How do you know it was a whale? It could have been a perch or a bass. I said, Well, that's a greater miracle. Thank you for preaching my faith. 
You tell me that God opened a little fish mouth and a tall man just walked right through it and said in the belly of him. I said, man, you just prove God is great. Amen. I can understand him well, but I swap. I'm trying with my finite mind, with all the ingenuity I have, all my study of the Bible and miracles. I can't wrap that concept that a swat opened his mouth wide enough for Jonah to walk right on down the tongue of the fish, seeing the belly of it. I said, man, that's a great miracle. Get my well message. It just caused my God to be great. It made me take the limits off of God. Let somebody say, I will pay my vows. Now let me give you these several things, you ready? Number one, my breakthrough is where? It's not my assignment. What has God ordained from your mother's womb, brought you forth upon this planet called Earth? What assignment has God asked you to do that you're afraid to do? You may not could do what Tracy could do. I may not could do what she could do. But every individual on the side of my voice this morning, you have a sovereign duty and a sovereign responsibility to boy, obey Almighty God and hearken to His voice. Yeah. Number one, somebody say my sight my is, in my is in my word. My what? My breakthrough. My breakthrough. Jonah, the seer of God, the prophet of God, let me say this. He's a seer. Somebody say number one. My breakthrough is in my sight. So God is not what? Waiting on me. He's waiting on my obedience. He's waiting on my obedience. Because my obedience moved heaven. So when I shift myself in obedience, I attract the wealth of heaven. I attract divine healing of heaven. Of heaven. Jonah is the epitome of the 21st century church that lost their prophetic sight. They are asleep, and God is saying, I want you to pray. He told the disciples there in the garden of city, Could you not pray? Since he managed with me, he felt them asleep at the moment of the greatest attack. When Satan was attacking him the most. The anguish of prayer, the sweat of his brow, this, the veins popped out of his head, spilling down blood that got upon his cheeks. The agony in the well of the garden of Gethsemane. And he looks to the one that he depended upon the most, and they are asleep. They're supposed to be seers, and they are asleep. God is dependent upon you and me, ladies and gentlemen. He needs a rabbit to raise up in the latter day, the latter house, so we can see my Christ. It's time that we raise the standard. Seize the moment. Understand what you're supposed to do is obey the living God. Whatever God asks you to do, simply do thus saith the Lord. Jonah. The type of the reluctant spirit. After all, I can somewhat understand Jonah's feeling. Because in the theology and the history of Nineveh, there upon the hill they would take states and he saw his family being murdered by the Ninevites. And now God's asking him, go back to the place where it reminds you of your greatest heart. Your assignment is in a place where your pain almost destroys you. Your assignment is in a place where your heart was crushed. Your assignment is in a place where you felt like death was gripping you. Your assignment is in a place that you were rejected by all. Your assignment is in the place where they really killed you. And they talked about you and they murmured against you. Go back. Jonah knew that God was merciful. The unmerited favor of God. He knew if he took the assignment, 
that the one that gave him the greatest harm brought the greatest torment and the lingering memory of pain. The image was in his mind. The soldier of his loved ones. How dare God wants me to go back and preach to a bunch of murderers. How in the world did God wants me to go back to somebody that was evil against me? Why would you want me to go back to someone you know that rejected me? Why do you want me to go back to somebody that meant me evil and harm and never help advance me in the kingdom? Because your assignment is there. Your breakthrough is there. You've got to overcome what the enemy gets out against you. You've got to overcome that pain that's been like a broken death around you. You've got to overcome that spirit of rejection that remind you that you have a Their greatest and greatest harm and danger. The very one that tried to assassinate our character and our purpose in life. The very family member that held grudges and unforgiveness. He often in time was allow us to see ourselves like he sees us. A child of faith. Jonah knew that God was merciful because he doesn't see God's in his mercy time and time again. But he picked the prophet out and he became reluctant. Somebody say reluctance causes you to drift from the presence of God. Reluctance causes you to drift from the presence of God. While you've been reluctant, you're drifting slowly but surely away from God. 
And before you know, you have no longer your conscience is no longer seared with conviction. And you found yourself doing any everything that pleases you instead of God. Because you have fallen asleep when you're supposed to be praying and worshiping and praising God. You fell asleep, you should be in the Holy Bible. You fell asleep when God said, Bring that song unto me. Read that word unto me. Minister unto me. Could you not carry 60 minutes? I'm under attack. And here comes the portrayal of Judas for his disciples that cast out devils, saw the multiplication of miracles. Leprosy clean, the blinded eyes open, the deaf ears are stopped. Now they're sleeping the moment that Jesus needed them the most. He didn't need them when he was walking on the water, see it got a leap. He didn't need them when he was raising the dead, cleaning some lepers. He needed someone to intercede on his behalf because Calvary's coming, portrayal's coming. The very place of your portrayal is the place of your breakthrough. Who am I prophesying today? You're about to get over that thing. Somebody say it's been long enough. I'm about to get over that pain once and for all. I'm about to get over that nightmare that keeps me up all night. Tossing, turning, and tossing, and turning. And before I know the sun that rise again, then sleep have left my eyes. Who am I prophesying that God said that pain is not going to kill you this time? That grief is not going to kill you. Get on the right ship and go to Nineveh. Yes, sir. Breakthrough. Somebody say my breakthrough. It's in my assignment. Shout with me. My breakthrough. It's in my assignment. None of us don't feast. I wear sorry. Tarsus don't feast. He drops his assignment though he can escape from God. And though he can escape from the eyes of Simon. Who are we to think that we can escape from God? It's His mercy that gave you a reason to live this morning. It rewrote my life. It's not by Tracy righteousness. It's not by your righteousness. But it's by the love that's unconditional that gives you a reason to lift up your hands and open your mouth every single day. Surpassing the love of angels. Come by the love of God that reached down to your broken heart and broken spirit. He loved Jonah so much that when he cast him out to the dark seas, the waves sound. The waves cease. I never love her looking, the cargo looking down into the dark seas. Darkness disappears upon the ocean and no shadow of lightness, no glory to be out as a reflection of God. All of a sudden, a creature over 30 tons, 30,000 tons, comes and opens his mouth and swallows the sinner. But God has a way to get our undivided attention. He spared Jonah by sending a fish to remind him, I'll hold you captive until you obey me. Three days in the belly of that well. Three days with seaweed, every disgusting thing that the well digested. For three days he meditated upon the Lord. He come to his senses. He come to a special knowledge of understanding. My breakthrough is in my sight. My victory is my sight. You want victory this morning? To get in your assignment. Yes. Your assignment is going to cause you to go back to that familiar face that you try to forget. Your assignment is going to take you all the way back to confront your fears. Your assignment is going to carry you all the way through that teaching journey until you obey God. Jonah had an assignment to Nineveh, jumped ship to Tarsha, and God got his undivided attention. Because wherever your assignment is, 
is where your breakthrough is. Somebody say, my breakthrough is in my assignment from God. You may not be a pastor, you may not be a prophet, but you have no excuse unto God on the side not to obey the say of the Lord. Every one of you can do something good in the earth. Every one of you got gifts and talents and potential. You got to see yourself the way God sees you. He said, I despise. Joshua and Caleb came back to Moses and said, There's nothing to Joshua and Caleb. There's nothing that mattered to us. And the rest of said, You know, we're like grasshoppers in their sight. That's how they saw their stuff. You're not a grasshopper. My God, we're not hopping around and without purpose. We're jack killers. We're king's kids. We're call out ones. We're chosen by the most high God. The problem lies in your assignment. Because wherever your assignment is, it's your deliverance. It's your freedom. Not only for you, but for your children. For your loved ones. Somebody said, obedience is better than listening to hearken to me. Somebody said, obey the Lord. Somebody say number two. Somebody say number two. I will sacrifice unto sacrificial preach. Three days gave him enough time after digesting seaweed, nastiness of everything that was digested in the stomach of the whale. They gave Jonah enough time to take a personal inventory. It gave him enough time to check his own salvation with fear and truth. And he came to his senses and he recognized, I'm in this predicament because I'm a jumping ship. I'm in this place of darkness. Know how great God is? How in the world did he breathe in the belly of a whale? You want to talk about incredible God is? Yeah. Sustain your breath in the midst of darkness. Yes. Sustain you in the midst of a dark room where the thousands of people gather but they can't see you. Yes. Yes, wow. He kept Jonah in the belly of that well until he understood my sight is what my breathing is. You are a seer, not a sleeper. And it's time to take off that great clothes of heaviness and put on the great will be worshiped as unto God. Sinners. And the Lord spoke to me from cancer to here. He said, I'm going to have to be serious, son. He said, the majority of my church is sister. I don't have many seers. I have many that have titles, but they can't see. They can't see the pain. They can't see the hearts that's broken. They can't see the grief that's unbearable. They can't see the pain that's tortured them day in and day out. But rise up and tell them their assignment is where their breakthrough is. Yes. Then the son may say, my son is where my breakthrough is. Yes. Number two, sacrifice. Nothing is done without a sacrifice. Your time, your effort, your finances, everything about you is a sacrifice unto God. And if you're not willing to make a sacrifice, you'll stay longer in the belly of that will. Three days, I can't even phantom imagine the thoughts of John. See, wrapped around him, discuss the smell of vomit. That's right, that's right. Digest as a fish that's been decaying in the belly of the well. Everything the will of digested in the deep, dark ocean. Now he's sitting in the pit of his belly, smell the odor and death. And all he's got to do is get in his assignment. All we got to do is stay in our assignment. Look at somebody say, my assignment is where what? My breakthrough. Somebody say, my breakthrough. Number two, nothing is done without a sacrifice. Somebody says sacrifice. Sacrifice. What is the sacrifice? Something that hurts. Go to Nineveh. That's an image of my mother on that stake. 
And you want me to preach to the murderous nation of Nineveh? You want me to go back to the place that remind me of grief? You want my assignment? Why would you send me somewhere else? God's not going to send you nowhere else until you get over your pain. Until you get over your rejection. Until you get over that hurt that's stinging you day in and day out. He's not going to do anything else until you get over it. He's a bridge over trouble word. He's a present help in my time of need. Throw your hands up and say, God, help me get over my pain. Who am I preaching to this? None of us sleep. The seer. The seer. He says sleep. So none of us are sleep because they don't have a seer. So that makes the nation of Nineveh asleep. A nation can't sleep without the word of the Lord. And now he's jumped ship, thrown overboard. Now he's been digested by the whale and Jonah come to his senses. Somebody said, come to your senses before it's too late. See, the message of here is parallels how the church is today. It's a vivid image of the church being of a No longer interest or care at the altar. No longer concerned that Jesus had the garden of Gethsemane and the very ones he needed the most to be his strength had fallen to a slumber sleep and the enemy greatest attack has come. And the moment that we close our eyes is the moment that the enemy is going to hit us the hardest. The moment we get distracted is the moment that the devil hits our family. The moment that we take our eyes off of the cross, speaking metaphorically as our place of deliverance, is the moment that the devil comes in and robs, steals and kills, and takes everything from us. But my I prophesy to this man. Here at Eagle Sensing Beach, you're silent. You're waiting on a man and God waiting for your obedience. He's a big God with a big plan. The only thing stopping God, you jump and ship to Tarsha. You going to northeast when you're supposed to be going to west to Nineveh. You may not want to go to Nineveh because it reminds you of pain and rejection. It reminds you what has been done unto you and your siblings. But the same God that spared us by sending his own begotten son and said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. doing. That same compassion, that same mercy, we're supposed to have it every single day of our life. If God can forgive us, then what's stopping us forgiving everyone else? If God can stand the right arm of fellowship unto us, and his son looked to everyone that crucified him, that he presented miracles to and deliverance. But yet, by the eyes of compassion, while the blood is dripping down upon his cheek, down upon his body, I agonize and cry all the way from power, heard around heaven and all the earth in the depths of hell. God, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And yet, somehow or another, we have succumbed to our own fears. We are wallowing all seen of bitterness as though that we don't even want anyone to have justice or mercy. When in fact, mercy woke you up this morning. When in fact, mercy relights your life in a single day. Every day your life has another page in your book that God said mercy was applied. I don't see your mistakes. I don't see your failures. Every time you're inelegant to obey me, I just see my mercy. Goodness and mercy shall follow me over the days of my life. And I will go well in the house of the Most High God. Throw your hands up and say, My assignment is where my breakthrough is. God is waiting for someone this morning to move in the rims of obedience. You don't belong in a ship going to Tarsha. You got a assignment down the Nineveh. You mean I got to go back to the one that rejected me preaching? You better believe it, honey. You mean I got to go back to the very one in my family that talked about me, read my name down all over the corner of the streets, gossip against me? You better believe it. 
You mean I got to go back and apologize for something that was not my fault? You better believe it. You mean I got to look them face to face and say, I love you? And I know they're not going to respond back to me. You better believe it. Because whatever your sight it is, that's your breakthrough. So they have to realize that God's a compassionate God. He had to learn that God is more merciful than man's mistake and what they've done in the past. And when he went, somebody say when he went. After three days, this is what he did next. You got it? Number one, what? My breakthrough is for my assignment. Number two is what? Sacrifice. Divorce of faith. Sin. God, I love you so much. I know I'm in the belly of the well because I put myself here. I'm in a predicament and a crisis that I created. I created this crisis. You love me enough to send a well that I may not drown in the bottom of the sea. And the darkness that dissipates upon the earth. Darkness that has no light and no meaning. But you love me enough to rescue me in the nick of time. You love me enough to snatch me from the jaws of hell. And give me a right to live as a child of the most high God. You're valuable unto God. Until you understand how God you are, you'll never know the importance of how much God loves you. The most important thing that John taught us in this text is he said, I will pay my vow. Yeah. And the moment that he paid his vow, the well said, I can't stand you any longer. You messed up my digestive tract. Yeah. I've been having you in my belly for three days. Yeah. And thank God that he's ready for me to go ahead and smooth you out. You have messed up my whole digestive system. I disappeared sheer in the belly of the well. Because God spoke to that fish to swallow Jonah. And that fish was talking to Jonah. Thank God that it's the third day. I don't have to carry you for the fourth day because you mess up my whole digestion tract. When he paid his vow, the whale opened his mouth and spit him on dry ground. That's another miracle by itself because a whale that size can't come but so far to the shore without being stuck. Jonah was airborne to the land. God put him in the cannon of the well, shut him up like a cat. Told that prophet, told that seer, now get on that land and go back to your assignment. I know you got pain there. I know you're rejected there. I know it reminds you of hurt and isolation. It reminds you of the role of death and stench. But that's what your assignment is. Your assignment is where your breakthrough is. You want your breakthrough? You want that breakthrough anointing? God telling me to tell you, get in your assignment because that's where your healing is. That's where your prosperity is. That's where your victory is. It just doesn't affect you. It affects everyone around you. All your siblings. Your city, your state, your nation is surrounded by one act of obedience of the God. I'm not going back there to tell that sister forgive me. I'm not going back there. The longer she become reluctant, the longer you're in the belly of that will. Tossing and turning and disobedience. Disobedience is carrying you three days where you should never be. And the depth darts and sea where there's no light at the end of the tunnel. But God spoke to that fish when he said one key word. I will pay my vow. For salvation delivers is of God. And the moment he made up his mind, the will said, thank God. My digestive system can go back like it's supposed to be. There's no old silence of disobedience in me. I no longer take something I'm not familiar with. I no longer have to deal with that and disturbing my whole, whole inside. And it got so to a place that he opened his mouth and the Bible said, the whale spit him out like a cannon is getting ready to go off. Launched him on dry land. And what was supposed to be a three day journey, 72 hours, the seer went from sleeping to seeing again. He went from being a sleeper to a seer. What took 72 hours he picked up his little legs and ran as fast as he could. The 
because he knew I'm not going back to the dark seats to be in a belly that way. My assignment is where my breakthrough is. Your assignment is where your breakthrough is. Look at somebody next to you say your assignment is where your breakthrough is. He cried unto the king. He said, God's going to destroy this land. And the king heard the prophet's word. They put on sackcloth from the king down to the servants, to those that were having babies, even unto the cows. Sackcloth. Not even the animals ate. And God saw their repentance. He saw He cried out and Jonah God got more than loved and angry because he knew God was more sinful. Something is wrong with this vivid image when you don't want God to stand mercy on someone. Something is wrong with your Christian faith and Christian walk when you don't want God to forgive somebody. Something is wrong with your walk with God when you don't want God to have mercy on someone. Something is wrong with the church when you don't want God to stand in his right arm of fellowship and embrace the prodigals again. Have we gotten so close to God that we don't want nobody else to be saved? Come on, come on. The fact of the matter is, we have become asleep while the enemy is attacking our ministry, our family, our finances, our bodies. We have become asleep. Wake up, old sleeper, and start seeing again. You don't belong to Tosh. You don't belong that ship with other dear my gods. You belong going to Nineveh. That's right. Because until you can face Nineveh, you can never truly know the grace of God. Suffered it. It's mercy. When the devil beats you down and trials and tribulations are piling up against you, you don't know where to go. You got complex problems all around. You don't know which direction to pick it along. Your mind is in a state of total and confusion. What do you do, prophet? What do you do, preacher? You get in your sight. Because your sight is your blessed place. Your sight is your breakthrough. Your sight is where well, you have coming and right to divine healing. Coming and right to divine prosperity. Jonah said, I will pay my vows for deliverance of the Lord thy God. Three days journey, he made it in 24 hours. He shifted the way you were thinking. And when you start shifting the way you think, you move into God's inheritance. You take the limits off of God and you move into his purpose. How dare we get to a place in God that we think that a prostitute don't need to be saved and delivered? Or someone that performs a witchcraft that doesn't serve a second chance. I don't care how dark they are. The love of Jesus can penetrate the darkest heart. Amen. The stone is upon them. I don't care how far they are, or how deep in the valley of sorrow they are. God is merciful. And thank God He's been merciful to you and me. It's not by your righteousness, nor mine. You're not good enough. I'm not good enough. But He is the one that's good. He is the one that's holy. He is the one without sin. Say, God, hear my hand. He'll stand his arm of forgiveness and mercy. Children preach the message of repentance and they heed the message of repentance. They cry unto God, suspect us. The king of Nineveh, the monarch of Nineveh, the highest office in Nineveh, ruling the people of Nineveh, bow his knee to Almighty God. He would deal with the matters of the seer because he had fallen asleep. May God wake us up now before it's too late. May God speak his spirit to us in the night season of our lives. May God wake us up to cry unto him and render our gifts and our times unto him. May we rise up and do the will of the Father. May we tell God yes to your will and to your way. May we not be murmurs and complainers agnostics of the world. May we be a remnant to say, God, we're going to be the redeemer of the Lord. So therefore, we got the last say so. May we be the one that the voice articulates the plan and the purpose of God in the earth. 
They be the one that gets back on the right ship. Our assignment is in Nineveh. What Nineveh are you running away from? What Nineveh are you afraid to confront? What Nineveh has pain and torture you? What Nineveh reminds you of that assassinated spirit, that murderous spirit? What person has reminded you of so much pain that you can't go back to? Because your sight is where your pain that's what your breakthrough is. My breakthrough. My breakthrough. What do you do, preacher? What do you do? You love the unlovable. You reach the unreachable. And you touch the untouchable. And you don't go into their realm. You bring them to work. You don't go to their level and speak down to them. Their hypocrisy and their bitterness. They meant them for evil. But like Joseph, God put me a second command so you can be spared and you can receive a miracle. They meant it for evil, but God turned around for good. Because all things work together for the good of those that love the Lord and call to in His purpose. Look at somebody say, I'm a purpose person. I got purpose in my life. May I remind you again of the points that get across to you this morning, this message. The reluctancy of one seer and falling asleep, putting in jeopardy everyone else that's on the ship going in the right direction, but he's going in the wrong direction. So you're in the wrong place, you can cause everyone else to go in the wrong direction. You can cause everyone else to catch signs in the dark seas of their return. Your obedience or your disobedience. Your obedience can shift you towards God's destiny, or your disobedience can order you away from God, from the presence of the Lord. How is it that a seer thought he can get away from the presence of God? It's a type of the 21st century Amazon Prevent Church. Because the truth of the matter is, the church in general has fallen asleep. And we need to get back up. It's time to get up and fight again. It's time to lace our boots and march like the army of God. It's time to get in our mess on our mission. It's time to be that mighty great army, the ceiling great army that Joe prophesied about. It's time to be the army of the Most High God and not relinquish our rights and authority to the powers of error. It's time for us to stand up for what we know is truth. If the devil be the devil, then cast him out. But if God be the truth, then stand for him. Yeah. If she can't sit at the table with the devil, sit the table with God. Yeah. Come on. Amen. We're going to have a revival this week. Yeah. We're breaking grounds this morning. Because when you get in your assignment, that's your breakthrough. Yes. You want to be blessed financially? What did Jonah do? He gave us the keys. Number one, my assignment is my breakthrough. Number two, I'm going to sacrifice. Right. Number three, I'm going to do what the spirit of thanksgiving. I'm not going to be able to murmur and complain, but I'm going to have an attitude of thanksgiving. Because I realized it was God's mercy that brought the will to me. Hallelujah. He could let me try. He loves me enough that he stopped me from drowning. He loved me enough to let a will capture me and get my undivided attention. I was going in the opposite direction. But now he loved me enough that he stopped the inner theme in the nick of time. He could have let me drown to the depth of the bottom of the sea where I no longer be recognized upon the people. But he loved me enough to stand his hand and say, No. Fish. That's a reluctant seer. A reluctant people. Swallow them until they understand what their sign is. Fish open your mouth and swallow him. Down the tongue of that well into the digested tree. Jonah lay there for three days in comparison to hell. With a stench, a smell of odor of death. Then he comes to realize his shadow. My sight for my breakthrough is now. Number two, I'm a sacrifice before the Lord. A sacrifice. I've got to make it a sacrifice. Number three, I'm going to have the attitude of thanksgiving. I'm not going to jump cargo or jump ship away from my sight. I'm not going to be over here when I need to be here. I'm not going to let somebody pull me away from my destiny. Where 
where I'm in a position of favor from God. I'm not going to let somebody pull me to another church when I'm assigned here. I'm not going to listen to the negative voices speaking in my ear cage. Because after all, where my assignment is, is where my breakthrough is. That's the third thing is Thanksgiving, the spirit of Thanksgiving. I mean, it's cause for Thanksgiving. It's cause for praise. To thank such the Lord in all things for this will of the Father. All things. All things. He didn't ask you about your feelings. He asked you about your obedience. He didn't ask you about your feelings. He asked you about your faith. Let your faith override your feelings. Because the moment that you step out in the realms of faith to overcome your feeling, it's a moment you're going to find your deliverance. You're going to feel better than you ever felt in your entire life when you release it and let go and say, God, thank you for your mercy that rewrites my life every single day. Thank God that mercy intervened in the nick of time. I was drowning in my sins and my disobedience, but God got my undivided attention in the nick of time. Somebody said number four, the fourth point. You got all four good points. Number one, your assignment is your breakthrough. Number two is your sacrifice. Number three is your Thanksgiving attitude. Number four, somebody said number four. We're coming to a close. I will pay my vow unto the Lord. Don't make a vow and I'll pay it. God don't want your money. He wants your obedience. God don't need your money. You don't got streets of gold in your house. You don't got walls and jets and gates of pearls. Hello? Yes. He don't want your money. He wants your obedience. Yes. Your finances is the seed that determines the outcome of your tomorrow. Your seed ripped around whatever particular need you have moves into your future and blesses your family with inheritance. But we have this concept that God owes us something. Jonah said, I will pay my vow. Now listen to this. He sacrificed. He gave thanksgiving, but the well never opened his mouth. But the moment he said, I paid my vow, the well had enough of joy. Yes. I can see that well say, I'm going to pay my vow too. Just get my my stomach. Yeah. Get my money. I can digest food right. My whole system is off. After all, God spoke to the fish. We don't know what the fish said. The Bible said that God spoke to the fish. That means they had a conversation. Do you get that in text? Or you just went right past that? The Bible said that God spoke to the fish. Reminding the fish, the sleeper woke up. They threw him overboard. Now, I need you to swallow him just for three days. But after three days, I guarantee you, he's going to come to his senses. How many days is it going to take for you to come to your senses? How many days is it going to come to a reality that God has a sign on your life? He has a mandate on your life. How long is it going to take for you to shift the direction that God asks you to do? Come on, somebody. Your business is held up. You want to be an entrepreneur? What, what are you waiting for? God wants your obedience. What has God asked you to vow and pay that you haven't paid yet? What seed has God spoke to you that you haven't released yet? What have you not released from your hands that God said now release it? What are you holding on to to stop your future deliverance? Because after all, it's not just about you, it's about your loved ones. But if somebody say, my assignment is my breakthrough. Four things, shout out to you. My breakthrough is my assignment. Your assignment is often the place of your pain. The mere image of your rejection. That place of room of death that you've been wearing. A grief that you can swallow like a pill you no longer digest. It. But yet, God said, that's where I want you to go. Because there's some people down there that's going to repent. Whether you think they deserve mercy or not, God didn't ask you for your opinion. He asked you to carry the message. Be a conduit of his presence. He didn't ask for our opinions. He asked us to preach the message of deliverance, salvation, holiness, miracles, signs, and wonders. 
Who are we to judge? Who are we to say who deserves to go to heaven and who deserves to go to hell? When in fact, if God closes his eyes, he can make us all vanish in one second. All together. But that mercy, that mercy intervened in the nick of time. That mercy found you going down a dark path. That destiny path for no return. And the enemy speaking to you. Keep on traveling. Keep on traveling. But all of a sudden the spirit of God woke you up out of slumber sleep and said, you need to see again. Stop sleeping. This is not a time to sleep. It's a time to pray. It's a time to understand the mind of God. It's to understand why you sow. Why you give. Why you tithe. Why you praise. Why you worship. Why you gather in the house of God. Rise up and stop sleeping. Time to see again. Stand to your feet right now and lift your hands. You can put any kind of music on if you want. Know. Somebody said, oh, lift your hands right now. Lift your hands right now. Just give me anything. It's time now. Four points. My breakthrough is in my assignment. Number two, I realized that anything God demands of me is a sacrifice. And the sacrifice is not really true, the sacrifice until it truly hurts. Number three, I've got to shift the way I praise. I've got to do this from the heart. Because out of the heart comes that perceiving word. It's the issues of life that deals with thanksgiving. I'm going to give God thanksgiving. Lord, thank you. I put myself here. I created this crisis. I jumped ship. But you love me enough to spare me. You love me enough to stop time for me. You love me enough that you sent the winds and the waves and I did not drown. I must have purpose. I must be valuable to you. I must have a reason for my existence or you would have let me drown. The devil whispered to you, you have no purpose. But you're still alive and you haven't drowned. If you don't think God ain't got nothing for you, you have drowned a long time ago. And the beds of no return. And the seas that would have swallowed you up at one go. The fact that you remain alive means you have purpose and destiny. The reason you can breathe, inhale, and exhale is because you have something to do for the kingdom. You have something to do on behalf of the kingdom. Right when I begin to put the sun, and you listen in your heart, right now, there's no time to be reluctant or disobedient. Yes, it hurts. Yes, the rejection was real. Yes, the grief was unbearable. Yes, the pain was like torch. The sword cut deep with their words and their actions. But God's mercy. It's greater than a soul that tried to cut me. God's mercy in the that nick of time. I was going to drown, but God gave me another opportunity. I thought I could sleep, but I put everyone else in danger by my disobedience. Some of you ain't got a choice. And the longer you stay reluctant and disobedient, you put everybody else in danger. And the moment you decide to say, Lord, use my gifts. Use my talents. Because after all, you gave them to me. Use my ministry. Use my voice. Use my hands. Help me put a smile on somebody's face. Help me embrace somebody in the time of the song. Help me sing that song that brings deliverance and victory. That's a song that everybody can sing that will bring victory to somebody. That's a smile that you can give somebody in the brokenness of their lives. You look around our land that's ravished with heartaches, sorrow. Somebody needs to go back to Nineveh today. Somebody needs to go to Nineveh so the new babies can be saved and spared. Somebody needs to obey the voice of the Lord so you can find your miracle and your breakthrough. Sir, would you come up here right now? This angel, yes, come on up here. Spirit of prophecy is here. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say my assignment. My assignment. Is 
where my breakthrough is. Right here in your heart. Right down through your heart. That's going to attack a church and vertex in your family. From your father's side, God said, I'm going to break that curse from the third fourth generation from a guy named El and your genealogy. God said, I'm breaking that. It's, a, it's right in your heart area. Pain and chest pain will come to you right here in your heart. God said, I'm bringing a miracle to you today. The Spirit of the Lord has summoned you in your household. God put a mandate on your life. And right around your calf area, your, your, that leg is painted that, around that deep hip area, that calf. Because I can feel sickness from my knee. God said, I'm bringing healing to you today. And you have gone through a loss of finances. The last few years has been attacked against your finances. But that next 24 months from now to the end, God's going to bring a financial testimony. Not only has He begun to heal your heart, break that generational curse, and repair the pattern of your knee. But God said, This is the day that I'm coming to your household to bring salvation, said the Lord. Come on, lift your hands and give God some praise. Come on, lift your hands and give God some praises. Come on, don't panic, God. You that's in your home, don't panic, God. We're going to Nineveh. We're not going to Tarsha. We have no business in Tarsha. We belong to Nineveh because we got a message to deliver. We got a word from God that must be delivered. Somebody depends upon your obedience. Somebody needs to be rescued. That's what God said to Rachel. So what message you guess? It wasn't that God looked down upon you, disliking you. He sent the fish to despair you think of time before the enemy could drown you without purpose. God's not gonna let you drown when you got a mandate on your life. Rise up, seize the moment, maximize it in other words. Rise to the occasion. Look at somebody say, I'm rising up. I'm coming up and out. Sister, come back right here. The green dress. Right here, the white sweater. Yes, you. Just come right. Come up here. No, right here. Right here. Yes, you. I feel the spirit of prophecy get ready to bring you to your open door. Somebody say hallelujah. For the spirit of the eternal glory. I've seen the tears that you shed down upon your pillow. But I'm getting ready to cause your tears to be no memorial, your coming of a breakthrough. The one that gave you the greatest harm, the greatest damage, damage unto you. I'm getting ready to cause them to have need of you. And even on your side, even around your ovary, feel my ovaries down your, your side, your hip area. God said, I'm bringing healing unto you. For this is the time that it's 21 days. I've seen your tears. I've seen the tests. But you're going to pass the tests with flying colors. You're going to have a testimony after 21 days. You're going to know, my goodness, it's like a garment that's running around you. I'm shifting you to your inheritance, your blessing, and what the enemy meant from harm. I shall begin to move you forward, saith the Lord. That is an anointing of breakthrough. Business all inside of you that the enemy has literally held up. And that's been a, a cave of darkness that seemed like you just were captured into that place of darkness. I'm not talking about sin. It's like heaven. It's depression. And God said, I'm breaking it right now in the name of Jesus. I break that open new life. I decree and declare the word of the Lord shall be true in 21 days from today. Lift your hands and say hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, give God a great big pipe off and a praise. Come here, sir. Right here. Scared of prophecy. Yes, come here. With the red title. Look at somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say the anointing. The anointing is here. Right in your shoulder blades. God is healing your shoulders. Right in here. Right in here. It's got pains in your shoulder area. Lift your arms up. Amen. Right in your shoulder area. God's going to give you a miracle. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now move your arms up and down. Just move your arms up and down. God's touching your shoulder. He's loosened. Tightness around your shoulder blade, around the rotary cuff. God said, this is a day of miracle. The enemy had tried to kill you, take you off of the earth. And God said, I spare you for your sight has yet to be fulfilled. Go in my strength and my power, and I'll give you what you have need of, saith the Lord. Somebody say hallelujah. Come a sister right here in the back. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say I'm blessed. Come in. I'm sorry you should have a music when I come here. I need some shout music. We need some shout music tonight. 
Somebody say hallelujah. Come on here. You're getting blessed. You're getting ready to get open, open heaven over you. There's a pinched nerve that God has hit. It's caused a time tension around your neck. Tension around the neck area. It's like a sharp needle pain with sheep that don't want. And God's causing you to have a miracle today. And you have been standing to give them your loved ones. And God's getting ready to reach his hands down to a, uh, see like a daughter. God said, this is the time of miracles and breakthrough. God said, I've heard your prayers and I've seen your tears. And this is the time of anointing. The miracle's going to manifest. God said, I've seen you. And this is the time of divine healing. Even around your disc area, God said, I'm healed. I'm bringing a miracle to you. God said, what the enemy meant from harm, I'm going to turn around for your good. God said, you will fulfill your assignment. All the days of your life, you will begin to see your family salvation. Those that lay in the orders and yet with a repentant heart, God said, watch me before this time next year what I'm going to do in your household, Seth, for the Lord. Come on, lift your hands. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Oh, yeah, give me something. I feel better now. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say God's good to do it again. Just throw that arm up if you've been having pain in. Throw that arm up. Just throw it. You keep laying. Just throw it. Move that arm. That's one. Come on, yes. Constantly hurt. My blood pressure is going. It's returning back to normal. High blood pressure is on the borderline of God's being. God said, I'm pushing it to the wounds. I'm bringing a miracle to your mouth. God said, I'm common favor, get ready to come to you. Just for this is a day of miracle. Sit for the Lord. Come on, put your hands together for you. Just in time, I'm going to bring this thing. He's dead and just a church. Somebody say, when the praise is going up, the miracle will come down. Coming, said the Lord. For I'm taking out what has pierced you in the last three years. I'm taking out what has brought you to harm and kept you in sleepless nights. I'm causing you to wear a new garment, said the Lord. And before November 18 is out, I will bring you to your greater testimony. You have walked down the road of loneliness, road of separation. And yet whispered and told the Lord, how long shall I go through this storm? 
How long shall you been attack me? But I'm breaking that spirit of witchcraft this day, says the Lord. And I'm sending it back to what to come. For this is a day of healing you, your mind, your emotions. I'm putting my hands around you, my nail scarred hands around your broken heart, your broken spirit. For I am summoning you for this hour and this day to bring my word up to you. And though it has been tried and tested, I will bring salvation unto you this day, says the Lord. And even around your kidneys, even around your lower abdomen, I'm bringing healing unto you. Rejoice, my daughter. But I shall bring a testimony from now to deliver me to you. And the word of the Lord shall be found true. Neither shall it fall to the earth, but it comes in that I say to And those that have looked down to you have need of you. They have spoken lies and spread rumors against you. I'll cause them to have need of your prayers and lay on hands. I'll cause you to dream of things that seem impossible, and I'll cause them to materialize. I cause you to hear the voice of the Lord. Even if you're here against, I'll cause you to stand. I'll cause you to know that I'm the God who heals all. For I'm healing you this day, said the Lord. Come on, let your hands and let's praise the Lord. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my heart. He healed my heart.
You're going to see what God spoke to me in my dreams going to manifest in your life. And you're going to see God's divine favor. I watched God do it in Ohio. I watched Him do it in Boston. I watched Him do it in Kansas. I watched Him do it while I was in New York City. I watched Him bring miracles to His children. Financially, healing. 22 years, a man could not move his arm and they sew it back together. No feeling, no movement. No blood circling. And God healed that arm as though it was brand new flesh. Now if you sold $143, make sure you write your checks out to Eagles Next Cathedral. You can give online, cash out, in several ways. Everything that bottom of your screen, if you want to give, all the information at the bottom of your screen, if you want to give a $443, God is going to give you a breakthrough. And I want you to write down my breakthrough C. My sight is my obedience. Now everybody take out a C of some size and don't miss your opportunity. Somebody say, my C decides my tomorrow. My C is going into my family for tomorrow. I'm not going to let the devil rob my inheritance. God set the foundation up this morning. And he sent me all the way from Kansas City, Missouri, to tell you the breakthrough is here because your sight is going to be revealed. All right, everybody stand to your feet. You got your seat. I want you to put your seat in my hand. Well, God bless you. Stand right over here. Stand right over here. Always faithful. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. If you give me a 443, stand on my right. God's going to come on, bring your seat to put your seat in my hands. I'm going to touch your seat or touch your cell phone. If you give it that charm or you give it my check, I want to touch you. God bless you. Come on, bring down your seat. Don't miss an opportunity while I'm here. I was with Marshall as a young prophet. He had known me as a six months as a young prophet. I've seen God make naked there several nights. I see God bring financial breakthroughs, even my own partners. They came to see me in revival. One got a hundred forty-three dollar, hundred forty-three thousand dollars debt cancellation. Miracles are happening right now. You the verse of a miracle. He didn't make sense. Turn around, just do it. Watch. You watch. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Somebody say, my seat. My seat. It's going into my tomorrow. I see my assignment. God bless you, woman. God bless you, sir. God bless you. Bring your seat and put my hands. My hands are going to help you be a great for breakthroughs. Everybody have a chance to give? God don't want us to have stinky hands. He don't want us to have stinky hands. He wants us to have hands to release. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say my breakthrough is in my assignment. Somebody said, my assignment is worth my obedience. My that will push you. I'm going to Israel sometime this year. It's the close of the year. I want you to know that God has heard your cries and set the stage. This time next year, our president and money is going to come to you. It's going to start today. It's going to be like the oil. The stand. All you got to do is keep on bringing vessels. The more vessels you bring before God, the more oil is going to be for you and your household to live the remainder of your day. God's made you in favor with man. There's a certain lady that's been watching your life. And she's going to bless you with untold riches. You're so close to being in that place where you have no more struggle, no more burdens. But your voice. God has heard you. See your shot of time and time again. You have always obeyed God's prophet every time I come here. And God is pleased with you. And He will bring this seat back to you. Before I leave this revival and go back to my next revival, you're going to testify how you got shook.
I'm going to shake your hands right here and say it with me. He that wears souls is wise. You can't take nothing with you. Stand to your feet as you may get dismissed. What are you going to bring tonight? What are you going to bring tonight? A wash cloth or a scarf, and we're going to wave it for what reason? It's going to be the mantle of victory. Father, we thank you for every seed that was sown. Come on, bring that seed on down. I want you blessed and highly favored by God. Thank you so much. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we decree and declare the blessing of the Lord and make a rich act of sorrow. We thank you for what you're doing, what you've already done, what you're about to do. Bless everyone in the sound of my voice. Give them rest until we come back tonight and see what you do tonight. Thank you for reminding us we don't belong in torture, we belong in none of it. Where our Sunday is, is where our breakthrough is. In Jesus' mighty name. Give God a great clap off and a praise. God bless you and thank you for doing it. Somebody say, I'm blessed and I'll you to do that. All right, lift your hands and get ready to be dismissed, but not from the presence of the Lord. Somebody say, what are you going to bring tonight? My scarf, or washcloth, I'm going to wave it. Bring somebody with you that needs a miracle, that needs to hear from heaven. Because God's going to move this week. Call someone else that was not here tonight or today. Bring them tonight. Say it with me. You don't got no troubles. All you need is faith in God. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to be here this morning. With a general faith, we thank you for Dr. W. Grant, all the pastors, all the leaders, all those that make it possible for us to stand here and be victorious today. We thank you for everyone else on our voice. All around the world, we appreciate your goodness, your mercy. Now, Lord, until we come back tonight, you have called us to get in our sight, which is our breakthrough. God and grace and bits and rents. God bless you until I see you tonight. Amen. Turn around and hug somebody and say, you're blessed by the Lord. I love you.